Hello! In this video, we'll be designing and customizing our own bat. Stay tuned if you want to build yours. We'll start by constraining our problem through the engineering requirements established by the MLB or Major League Baseball's definition of what the maximum and minimum characteristics of a bat are. That'd be maximum diameter, maximum length, and the bat drop, or the minimum weight. Once we have these variables, we can get started on our design. Make sure you establish yours. Now that we have the requirements to create an MLB legal bat, let's create the stock material that we would need if we wanted to cut this bat on a lathe. We can simply create a rectangle, use the max length that we defined in that variable, as well as the max diameter divided by two. This will give us the base for the stock material that we can use to cut out an MLB legal bat. Now that we have our base rectangle, let's create a midpoint constraint between the origin and the midpoint of the bottom line where we will establish symmetry. This will keep our design nice and centered. Revolving this will give us a cylinder. This cylinder is the stock material that we could use if we needed to lathe this bat out. I always like to rename my stock so I can always reference it back. I will also change the material appearance and the transparency so that later down the line, we can do a check against our bat and make sure that our final product can actually fit within the space allowable. We can also change the material of the stock wood in this scenario to maple. With our stock made and represented, let's hide the part and just leave the sketch. I will now import an image of a reference bat that I will use as the baseline for our design. I will leave this image in the description so you can grab it. To use this image, we create a new sketch in the front plane and import it. Once we have selected the image, we can simply drag and place it in space. Now that we have our image in space, let's center it around the base sketch that we drew around our stock material. We can do this by selecting the top points of both squares and making them vertical using the shortcut V. Once we have made both points verticals, we have the bat squared around the stock material, which we are using as a reference. Let's now center it around the center line of the original sketch that we drew. I will use the rocket in this image as a centering mechanism for the bat that I'm using as a reference. Let's commit the sketch and understand what we've done so far. Now that we have this reference, we can start thinking about the profile of the bat that we will fundamentally revolve. Let's create a new sketch in the front plane. Make sure that you don't do this on the reference image or it can create a mess down the line. We will start by creating a reference line that is tied to our original stock material. This ensures that our dimensioning will not fall off downstream. We can dimension these in relation to the image that we imported, as well as the stock material that we created earlier. This is a great way for us to start contextualizing the beginning and end of our bat. We will do this by creating two lines, which we should define as construction geometry. We can do this by pressing Q or by selecting the construction tool up in the toolbar. Now that we have our construction geometry, let's select the Bessier spline. The Bessier spline will give us the best results when we're creating the curvature of our bat. As I go along, whenever I see a change in curvature or a set of curvature that will need better control, I will add a point. But keep in mind as you add points that the more points you create, the more potential for your surface quality to degrade. So whenever we can, we should save points and leave this curvature as smooth as possible. I will begin at the first reference line and I will end at the last reference line 
overbuilding the geometry slightly. Let's take a first pass and adjust the points to fit the curvature of the bat. This is a freeform example, and you should be able to match the picture you imported, regardless of the bat that you brought in. I will not define this spline and let you take this exercise into your own hands to define the geometry of your bat. While we are not worried about falling outside of her stock material just yet, do notice that we are outside of the bounds that we established at the beginning of the exercise. We will come back later to revisit those details. Now that we have finished the spline, let's just make a last attempt at cleaning things up before we start building the end of the handle so that we can revolve this bat around the center ax axis. To build the handle, we will select the circle tool and match the geometry more or less accurately. Again, this is a freeform exercise, so feel free to use your own dimensions and a guide of this picture or any other that you find on the internet. Once I have my circle, I will use another Bessier spline and add tangency on a two degree Bessier. This will give us a nice control over the handle end. Make sure that the Bessier and the circle you establish are tangent to each other. This will create the cleanest surface. Once you're happy with the geometry you've created for the pummel, Let's create a line. This will just add a little bit of detail to the end product of our revolve. I will define this line to be 0.05 inches away from the end of the pommel of my bat. Once I have this done, let's select the trim tool. The trim tool allows us to split some of the lines and constrain the geometry more accurately. Now that everything is nicely trimmed, let's build a line from the very endpoint of the handle to the top of the bat. Once we get to the top, also notice that we've left some of the geometry behind. Let's create one last rectangle to amend this. This will later change shape as we add a fillet to the 3D object. Do not overly constrain this or it might cause problems downstream. Let's just add a thickness to it. Once we have this rectangle defined, let's once more select the trim tool and clean it up. This will set up or revolve nicely. Commit your sketch and revolve it. Once you're prompted for the axis to revolve around, just select the middle axis. Now that our revolve is done, we can hide our reference sketch and finish our detailing of the bat. Let's start by creating a fillet at the top. We want to create the crown of the bat. We can simply select the outer edge of the top of our bat, and then we can just make that fillet 0.25 inches to best represent the torpedo bats. While I do not need to establish a second fillet, and I could have done this in the first one, you have the flexibility to add a fillet at the handle or not. This is up to you. At this point, our design is mostly done. We've created the main geometry, and we can just add some more detail to customize our bat. I'm going to do some very quick decaling. Let's just create a large circle, which we will use to split the geometry. Once we're adding decals like this, it is recommended to add some dimensions as it will help us better control the detailing of our bat. I will simply make the circle 27 inches in diameter and 9.5 inches offset from the midpoint that we established earlier. I will also name my bat and give it some personality. We can place the sketch in space and constrain it accordingly by using points, midpoints, vertical constraints, and some dimensioning. This is really all up to you as at this point, we are simply adding details. To leverage this last sketch, let's select the split tool. We can select face. We can select the face we want to split and the whole sketch that we just created. From here on out, I recommend we name the bat, add an appearance so that we can customize our bat to our liking, 
and change the material of the bat. Today, as we established earlier, I will be using maple. You can also select the faces and add appearances to those faces. This will allow you to add multiple colors to the bat, which will make it look more aesthetically pleasing now that we're customizing it. Now that we're done with aesthetics, let's check this bat against our stock wood. We can see that it does not fit the stock that we defined earlier, meaning that we are not meeting our functional requirements. Let's go back through a feature list and make sure that we can meet those functional requirements properly. Through Onshape, it's simple to edit the feature that we created earlier by editing the spline and ensuring that it fits within the bounding box defined by the stock wood. This will be important if we want our bat to be MLB compliant. Simply change your spline to make sure that it does fit within that boundary. Keep in mind, you can use the final tool to see those changes before you commit them. Now our bat fits or stock wood and we can move forwards to manufacturing. If you're still sticking around, let me show you a couple other on-shape tricks. At this point, I would create a version. I've actually already built a couple different bats. So let me show you how I can take my new design and compare it to my very first version of this bat. As I was trying to figure out the geometry, I created Mark 1, and now I can compare back to what Mark 1 looked like versus what this new improved bat design looks like. This is easy to do with a compare tool. Keep in mind, if you do want to explore further designs, you can simply create a branch and explore your design in a safe space where you are ensured to not break anything with the power of Onshape. I was curious to understand how my bat would perform hitting a five ounce ball that was moving at 95 miles an hour. So I created a quick simulation as I am an Onshape professional user and I can simulate right within an assembly environment. Using, using a mate connector, I established the force and now I can understand the stresses and displacements for my bat as it undergoes a physical event. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thanks for sticking around. Definitely let me know what your bat design looks like and what other videos you would be interested for me to make in the future. Thanks for tuning in and see you on the next one.